All righty, Diesel Weed People News. One more time at it, people. All right. Uh, never look straight forward. Always look around you. Be able to protect yourself by any means necessary. In this case, I may not do any interruptions. Let's get this knocked out on this last video. All righty. Always demand counsel of your choice under the Sixth Amendment at every hearing until you get it or until you establish reversible error. This does not mean a licensed bar attorney. What does that mean? I can call you? That's right. You can demand, I have a right to counsel of my choice. Assistance of counsel of my choice is my right. Now, James, what if they say, Mr. Tracy, you're practicing law without a license? <laughs> and I'd be like, um, that's your accusation, and I would love for you guys to prove it. Be my guest. And then they'll say, well, then why are you here assisting as counsel? Because you asked me to. But then you're practicing. I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate. You're playing. Then you're practicing. If you're representing yourself as counsel, I'm based on what you and I went through. Is what yeah. I'm doing with this. You're based yeah, I know. The problem is, is that I can't go in there and speak on your behalf and speak for you. But I can absolutely be right there next to you, and I can help you, and I can tell you what to say. See, they don't. They didn't even want to allow me to do that. No. Well. Not without, we have to go behind and then I have to remember what you say and then they slip you a little tricky statement and then you don't know mm -hmm. what to say. Yeah, mm -hmm. they definitely, no, they know what they're doing. Yeah. But, um, okay, so you can call anybody. Yeah. It doesn't have to be an attorney, a licensed bar attorney. Yeah, I, let me see if I can find. There so I'm going to give you all James's phone number at the end of this. Those are <laughs> that's, no, 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 that's not what we're saying here, people. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, let me see if I can find, um, the Supreme court case that says you have a right to request someone who could be even your next friend. So yes, you know, I'll, have to, look it up. I'll have to look it up and see if I can find it. I think I might have it in, uh, in a different spot, but, um, that's, okay. we'll post that in the Instagram later. I mean, in the telegram chat. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. I have it here in my saved cases. Let's see. Is it this one? I don't remember which one it was. It's anyway. I, I watched this, so he doesn't. He couldn't find it at the time. So we're gonna jump ahead a little bit. Side of you know, I don't want this Joker. You know why I don't want this Joker? Because the Supreme Court Chief Justice a, a handful of years ago said nine. Um, I'll, I'll figure it out and we'll post it in the Telegram chat. But anyway, the Supreme Court has stated that you have a right to uh, counsel of your choice. And if they deny you that, well, that's a reversible error. So well, now, and this, and this, you're going to hear this. It's like, well, Mr. Mr. Tracy, you, you can have a licensed attorney at the side of, you know, I don't want this joker. You know why I don't want this joker? Because the Supreme Court Chief Justice a, a handful of years ago said 90% of all trial lawyers are incompetent. So I've got a, I got a 10% chance that this guy has a clue as what he's doing. I don't want him. I want somebody that I know that I can trust. I want my good buddy, Brandon Sibley sit next to me. I want my good friend, Erica sit next to me. Right. So the definition, if they get technical with you is two. And the first one is advice, especially that given formally. Mm -hmm. And then the second is the lawyer or lawyers conducting a case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Giving, giving a, give advice to someone is to counsel. So yeah. Assistance of counsel for his defense. Does that sound like, um, Oh, you need to hand the reins off to somebody else and put your life in the hands of some guy who's just making a buck. I'm not saying that the law profession is bad. I'm not saying that attorneys and that all attorneys are, are bad. I'm just saying and repeating what the Supreme court has stated that 90% of the attorneys that argue cases in front of them are incompetent at the Supreme freaking court. Mm -hmm. So if they're, if 90% of the attorneys there are incompetent, do you think you're going to find a, a, a constitutionalist, one who's going to guarantee that all of your rights to due process are followed? No, because you know why? Because these morons think that what the legislature puts on paper is gospel freaking truth. They don't understand our rights come from God and then they don't come from a piece of paper. They don't get that. Or they won't admit it. They won't admit it. So this is why we always demand 
and, and, and I, again, I would encourage you guys, listen to the George Gordon tapes. There's a lot of good stuff, and he goes through all of this, where they deny him time and time again his right to his to counsel of his choice, and he keeps bringing it up. Well, this court has denied me my counsel of my choice. We've already been down that, Mr. Gordon, we've already been down that path. We're not going to re relitigate that issue. All right, I'm just letting you guys know that you've denied me my right. So, okay, rule number 18. Always repudiate any suggestion of a licensed lawyer or public defender at every opportunity without fail. So when they try to, to pawn on you a public defender, no, I don't want it. There it is right there, Supreme Court. 90% of all trial lawyers are incompetent. So Ms. George Gordon talks about the situation where the court ordered him. He says, I'm going to order that you accept this public defender. And so he said, okay. So he went down and he made an appointment with this public defender. And he says, I'm going to interview this guy to see if I actually want to hire him. And he starts going in there and interviewing this guy. I mean, he had 115 questions <laughs> that he wanted to ask this lawyer. And the first one that he started asking was uh, something along the lines where, where the lawyer's like, are you insulting my intelligence? And he says, no, I just... I'm just saying the Supreme Court has said 90% of all trial lawyers are incompetent. I'm just under trying to get a handle if you're competent enough to represent me and my case. Yeah, or he could have said, no, I'm just exposing it. Yeah, and he said, well, the conversation broke down right there. The guy threw me out of his office, and he filed a notice with the court and says, I'm not representing this guy. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. So there's, there's, there's a lot of interesting things that, that can come with this, but again... <clears throat> Don't accept what the court is telling you you have to do. Do not accept, well, this is a, you know, this is an administrator. We don't hold jury trials here. We only hold bench trials. And if it's a jury trial, it's a trial, it's a jury of six people. No, I'm demanding my right to a trial by jury of 12 of my peers. That's what it is. And I'm objecting. Well, your objection is overruled. Well, we'll see how well that works out for you later on. Okay. And... We were, uh, I had a video a couple of videos back, right? Our pre videos now. <laughs> that I showed a court on cam uh, that the guy called the judge out on record and telling the judge he is committing treason on record uh, for the whole public to see. <laughs> and, and this guy's basically saying the same thing. Last one, rule number 19. A public defender is qualified to plea bargain and lose every time. Have you guys ever noticed any public defender that actually vehemently fights to exonerate their client? No. <laughs> no. Maybe it, back it, in the day, James, but it's, it, it hasn't been that way in a long time. It, it, you know no. what? It's so funny is, is I remember talking with, gosh, I can't remember who. Who it was I was talking with, it was somebody we were trying to help, and they said they had a public defender, and the public defender was saying, you should just bar plea bargain this out, plea bargain this out. Rather than actually try to stand up and fight it, they were like, nope, just plea bargain this out. Hmm. So this is that's why it's rule number 19. They are qualified to plea your case and lose every single time. I, I remember incriminating myself um, by saying, well... Wouldn't a plea bargain be fraudulent? Because if I was speeding at 60 miles an hour, why are you guys then lying and saying that I wasn't? Like, I re literally remember that one time I went to jail. It was like, long story, but it was speeding, like some ridiculous five miles over the speed limit or something. But I'm like, what's a plea bargain? Oh, they'll give you a lesser charge. I said, but I didn't commit a lesser charge. Right? <laughs> I admit it. So you guys aren't honest to begin with. I, I mean, that's what you do when you're 20 and you're stupid or whatever. But think about it. It's all about making money because why would they then plea bargain? Yeah. It makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's again, I, I I don't understand why, thing, why people do things that they do. I, I don't. I don't understand why there is a public defender's office who doesn't actually defend their clients. I don't understand that. It's about money. It's because, because again, you're right. It is about money. So here, here's here's something interesting: is that one of these traffic courses, uh, traffic cases, 
if you were to fight that all the way to the Supreme Court, <clears throat> now George Gordon said back in 1985 that would have cost the city $60,000 in 1985. How much money would that be today? Lots of money. <laughs> Probably closer to half a million, if not more. So if it's going to cost you nothing. You can fight that all the way to the United States Supreme Court, and it'll cost you nothing as a defendant. But it's going to cost them over half a million dollars just to defend that. Mm -hmm. So, again, this is, this is a churn and burn. This is why you see so many people. I mean, if you don't believe this, just go... Go down to your local traffic court one day and just sit there and see how many people they're just processing through there. 10, 15, 20 people. Do you understand these charges? Yes, Your Honor. How do you plead guilty? Okay, pay the fine as you leave. I have to walk out the door. That's what happens. Yep. And sometimes, again, and I'm, and I'm guilty of this too, where we've done it because it's convenient. Yes. And they know that. I don't that. have the time to fight this. Like my, 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 my numbskull of a nephew, don't get me wrong, I love the kid, but he parked his car, which is, which is, in my name, he parked his car on the street and got a ticket. I didn't have time to fight it. So I had to pay the stupid ticket. But if I had time, believe you me, if I had time to fight it, I would have. But I don't. Right. So this is where this is where it, it gets tough, and this is the struggle that we have, you know, that, that fine line that we have to um, toggle between. But at the end of the day, a public defender is going to be qualified to lose every single time. So no one knows your case better than you. Even though you may not feel competent enough to speak on your behalf, there are people who are willing to help you. I'm willing to help you. Anybody's willing to help. Just ask for it. So, and that, my friends, are the 19 rules that you must follow if you expect to win. And go to YouTube and look look up George. Yes, Lots of videos. Lots yeah, of he's got like 20-something videos. I'm still listening to them all. I love them. They're a great thing to listen to that I'm, I'm driving in my, my truck to and from places. So, yeah, George. George is a great man. He's got a lot of good information. So, um, you guys, I, I again, I, I can't reiterate enough that if you, if you become a belligerent claimant of your rights, you're going to start winning. Even in these stupid little traffic courts, you're going to start winning. So just focus on the fights that need to be fought. Let's stop fighting amongst ourselves over, over petty, stupid stuff. And let's start focusing on, focusing on things we need to do to win. So um, with that, that's all I've got, you guys. Any, any closing thoughts you guys want to add, Erica or Justice? Yeah, um, I was just thinking to reiterate, because um, Justice was asking about what what kind of thing you could have on your on your visor or whatever if you get freaked out mm -hmm. rule number 15 i think was a really good suggestion for listing out those three things that yep. about the um, subject matter jurisdiction you know demand the probable cause um what was the other ones um the, like, the three the three th if you do nothing else at a traffic stop this is it mr officer what's your probable cause i demand a fourth amendment warrant and I will not be answering any questions without counsel of my choice present. Yeah, fourth and fifth amendments. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's your probable cause? Yep. And don't let these guys bully you into telling you who, telling them who you are. You have a right to your privacy. That's what the fourth amendment is. All persons have a right to be secure in their person, in their houses, personal effects, and papers. So well, you cannot, well, well, the law says I can demand your. If I have this and I can demand this, it's like, okay, well, I'm just telling you right now, you, without a warrant, you don't. Well, within reason, which is why you were saying to ask for it and, you know, it's on their body cams because there's lots of people doing that now and you see the footage. And especially if you're a male, they will rip you out of the car and manhandle you. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. And we don't want that. We don't want anybody. So don't push it so far that they're going to rip you out of the car. Give it yeah, with a smiling pregnant lady. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> who's got who's got herbs and and fresh baked bread in the chair next to her and a kid. They don't care. Thirsty, you know. Like, yeah. They're beating women up everywhere. They don't care. There's no more honor of, amongst these men. It's crazy. So Joe Spencer says here in Utah, you do have to tell them your name and birthday. So there is a statute that says that. But do you guys remember what I said earlier in the broadcast? 
Marbury versus Madison. Mm -hmm. All laws which are repugnant to the Constitution are null and void. Right. Wait a minute, Joe. Don't I have a right to my privacy? Isn't that a protected right under the Fourth Amendment? Yeah. So no, I do not have to tell them my name and my birthday. Even if I'm being suspected of a crime, they can go get a court order. Go get a court order ordering me to tell you who I am. The criminals change things for their benefit. So they've come in and created statues to, you know, just like that thing I sent you yesterday, James. They clearly created mm -hmm. something that says you can't sue for fraud now or they can't go to jail for fraud, which is... Yeah. Which they're, is, they're, they're, trying, they're trying to cover their butts right. by legislating, oh, this is your get out of jail free card. No, that's yeah. not how it works, right? That's okay, exactly again. what they did in Indiana it's, with, they did, they with did all it the everywhere. doctors to protect them from COVID measures. Yep, they've done it everywhere. They've done yeah. it everywhere. So, well, guys, thank you so much. I apologize. i got to jump off for a work phone call, but gosh, I'm so glad we got together. It's good to see you all. Um, everybody, this year is going to be a great. All righty. Hopefully, uh, some of y'all learned some things. Some of y'all already know this. Some of y'all already know half of it. Till next time, G-Sweet People News. Bye, y'all.